can AI, artificial intelligence, actually cull our photos for us? Well, we're gonna see. And I need to tell you a little secret. I've got to tell you, every single one of the photos I take is an absolute banger. Perfect composition, perfect lighting, perfect expression. Every time. Yeah, right. No, our dirty little secret is that we don't nail it every time, and a lot of what we shoot is only fit for the bin. Through my years as a professional photographer, I have lost so much time to the culling process. Time I wish I could get back, but thankfully, now there is a solution. I just wish it had been available sooner. I had the privilege of photographing weddings for over 10 years. I loved it. However, for every shoot I did, I spent about four hours culling through those photos. I wanted to get my three or 4,000 shots that I'd taken, yeah, I overshoot, down to about 700 to get back to the client. So if I do the maths, it's frightening. We've got 10 years, 31 years ago, carrying the one. That is a lot of time that I am never getting back. Today I'm sharing what I think is a fantastic bit of software that actually uses AI to facilitate our culling process. Mind blowing, right? So thank you Filter Pixel for sponsoring this video. If you guys like the look of it and you think it'd be a good fit for your photography workflow as well, I've got a link in the description for a free trial. And if you wanna go ahead and purchase it, there's also a 10% discount link as well. Now, while I'm really excited by this software, it might not be right for every photographer. So please don't just go ahead and purchase it. Watch the video and we'll look at both the pros and the cons and we'll be able to see whether or not it's right for you and your workflow. FilterPixel is an app that's available for both PC and Mac that allows us to cull our photos fast. This is crazy, but the software's AI analyzes your photos and then looks for key indicators to deter determine. Pe -pe 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 pig. It looks for key indicators to determine which photo is better than another one. So, for example, focus quality, whether eyes are open or shut, whether one expression is better than another one. And based on that, it can automatically select your keepers from the ones that are going in the bin. But if like me, you don't fully trust the AI, you can use it just to give you a helping hand to get close to your finished cull and then go through manually and just make sure you're happy with the selections. It's really cool. So filter pixel loads up and the first thing we want to do is create a new project, which we can do by clicking this plus icon here or just doing a drag and drop of the folder we want. But in my case, I'm just gonna open that and I'm gonna open this portrait session here. And we have the option to let the software know that it's a set of portraits, weddings, family shoot, event or other. So it's portraits. So all I need to do is click start now. And one of the first things I dig about this software is just how quickly these thumbnails are populated into the screen. If you guys have used Lightroom for culling before and you have to render your previews before you can start your cull, that is just such a waste of time, whereas straight away these previews are being pulled directly from the embedded JPEG in the raw file. So it's a big time saver. And so if I scroll all the way down, I don't know, let's jump all the way down to the bottom here, you can see just how quickly these populate. And if you glance your eyes to the percentage bar up here, this is giving us an estimation of how long it's gonna take for the AI to go through and analyze all of these photos. And from there, we can literally auto select our cull once it's done that. So while that five minutes is going on, we can go and grab ourselves a nice cup of coffee, go and see the family, whatever, leave it to do its thing. And that is actually an insignificant amount of time when you compare it to how long it takes Lightroom to generate a set of full-size previews, right? Okay, so the AI has analyzed our photos. And at this point, what we could do is go one of two ways. We could either treat these photos like we would normally do in a cull and go through and pick or reject the photos. And one of the things I love, by the way, is this little view here. So you can see straight away whether or not the face is any good. So without having to zoom in and analyze the photo, each one zoom into the face, filter pixel straight away gives us that face in a nice clear view. So we might glance this photo here and think, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. But as you can see here, that face is pretty soft so I'd probably be rejecting that one and looking for something better and sharper. But if I come up to the grid view we can actually do what is the real time saving feature of this app which is to press auto select and just like that based on that previous analysis that the AI did it is now from our 744 photos that you can see down here in the bottom left it is now selected 359. Those photos have now been accepted. We have 384 here which haven't been accepted and as you can see on the right hand side it says a better version of these photos has already been selected. And we have one photo that the AI considers to have a 
major issue and has already been rejected. These first six photos were just test shots, so they're definitely rejects. So you might think, well, why hasn't the AI already thrown those away? Well, the clever thing is ultimately the AI will start to do that for you once you've told it that you don't like these kind of test shots. The AI actually learns from your style of culling. But for now, it's playing it safe, doesn't know that these aren't supposed to be part of the set. So all we need to do is just press X on the keyboard. And X is a great hotkey for rejecting something because it's like putting a big fat <clears throat> over the top of something saying it's no good. And while we're on the topic of keyboard shortcuts, you can see in the menu bar up here, if we click this, we get a list of all of the shortcuts available to us. And one of the really good things is there's a lot of crossover between the keyboard shortcuts used inside Filter Pixel and other culling software that you may know, such as Lightroom. And in addition to that as well, you can see we can also star rate the images one to five like you can in Lightroom, and we can also color rate the photos as well. Any information that we assign through Filter Pixel to a photo is automatically copied over when these photos are moved into our photo editor, such as Lightroom. If you're not interested in learning any of the other shortcuts, two of the most important would be P for picking your photo, or as they've put here, accept image, but I choose to think of it as P for pick, X for get rid of, but these are all useful commands and well worth learning. The user interface of Filter Pixel is really nice. It's just clean and simple, which is exactly what you want when you're trying to judge photos. You don't want to be bombarded by other things distracting you. In the top left here, this is a really important area because this denotes how many photos we have accepted. The auto select button is what we want to allow the AI to do its thing. And on the right hand side, we have our different views. We've got the grid view. We've got the full screen view, which allows us just to flick through the photos one at a time and get this fantastic thumbnail of the face over here. And you may have noticed when we were in the grid view that some of the photos had a number in the top left hand corner. And this is really cool because what it denotes is where Filter Pixel has found very similar photos and stacked them all together. So if we come over to this photo here, if I press this plus two, in this comparative view, we can in fact see that we basically have three identical photos. And Filter Pixels used its AI to compare the three photos, check which one's sharpest, check which one has the best smile as well, and then it's going to accept that, as you can see here, and the other two remain untagged. And then we can just click this back arrow here to take us back to the grid. Let's scroll down here just so we can see some different photos. Let's have a look at this photo here, and let's say we want to compare this photo with other similar options. What we can do is either come up here to our comparison mode and click that, or you would have noticed from the keyboard shortcuts that we can press C. So by pressing C on the keyboard, we can see the original photo, we can see a comparative photo, and you can see that we've got five other similar photos. We also get other information such as the tags that the AI has automatically assigned to the photo. So it thinks that we have high quality eyes, in spite of the fact that we have a hat that's making it very difficult for the AI to actually even recognize eyes, but it's able to do that. So that's great. And apparently I nailed perfect focus. Ding! There is a lot to like about this program, but here's one more thing that I think is really cool. You see on this photograph here, and it's brought up our thumbnail of the face. It's pretty soft. You can see that straight away, but you can see that it has been accepted by the AI, but it comes with this warning. Image has minor issues, but accepted because no alternatives were found. So you can see the tilt of her head, very different to this one here. So it says, this is its own individual file. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I will accept it. But if we decide that we're just not happy to deliver a photo to a client, with a low focus quality like this, we can come down to this slider here, which actually allows us to adjust focus quality. And if I grab that and actually crank that up to say 85%, that is automatically going to refine our cull to only include photos where the software perceives the focus quality to be above 85%. So being able to make this manipulation is a really great way to refine your cull down because initially when I had that set at zero saying just accept everything, that cull number in the top left here was at 353 and that is way above what I would want to deliver to a client. And so by using this slider, we're able to bring the number down. We could also do the same by adjusting the eye quality as well. So again, it's only going to accept photos that it perceives as having a high eye quality. We've also got other ways of managing our photos, such as coming up to the apply filters box here. And based on filters that the AI has assigned or ones that we have custom created and applied to photos, we can organize our photos very nicely that way as well. This is actually the culling software that the legendary Sue Bryce uses for her portrait work. So if it's good Good enough for Sue, it's good enough for me. But for my work where this really would have come into its own is for wedding photography. So let me show you how Filter Pixel would allow you to smash through a wedding cult in next to no time. 
Rather than clicking to create a new project, this time I'm just going to drag and drop my folder straight into Filter Pixel. I'm going to let it know that this time it's a wedding. Click Start Now and away we go. It's going to load the previews for me just like that. So if I just start scrolling down, you'll be able to see just how quickly these are populated onto the screen. And I really love this. But because I'm a little bit trigger happy on a wedding day and we have 2,800 photos, as you can see in the bottom left, this is going to take a little while for the AI to go through all of these photos, find all the faces, analyze which shots are better than others. And as you can see here, we have the first pass of culling is in progress. Photos with major issues are getting tagged as rejects. And the auto culling is underway. We're currently at 1%. So I'm gonna go and grab myself a coffee and leave it to do its thing. Okay, it says we're 100% there. The AI is still doing something, but I'm impatient. So I'm gonna click auto select. And bammo, just like that, we've gone from 2,800 photos down to 1,303. We're in a much better place to now go through and just refine the selection. When you're culling a wedding, this ability to quickly see faces that are automatically zoomed in at full res is just so useful. So for example, this group shot of the bride and the bridesmaids, it's just so easy at a quick glance. And we can check the faces, make sure we're happy with the eyes, with the expression. And as you can see from the fact that this is the top photo in a stack of 16, this is the photo that filter picks has already decided based on all of these expressions with everybody looking this is the one photo that's made it out of a set which is essentially all very similar I just took a lot because I wanted to make sure that everyone was looking so hopefully you guys can see just how beneficial filter pixel can be for us allowing us to color wedding basically just with one click of that AI button so from my initial tests it looks like the AI is going to be able to get us pretty close to that finished cull that we're after and then we may just want to go through and just double check that we're really happy with that final cull particularly when we're starting to use it. But in this case, let's say we're happy. What do we do next? What's the final step to get those photos ready for the editing process? Let's take a look. And this transition from filter pixel to your editing software is really nice. We just come up to the export button here, click that. We've got three export options. I think the first two are the most useful. We can take our photos direct to Lightroom or we can separate our selects into a brand new local folder. Either option is really good. And when we send the photos out, any tags, star ratings, color ratings, they all go with the photos as well. And then we simply click export photos and we're off to our editing phase of our post-production. Okay, let's take a look at the pros and the cons so you can decide if it is right for you or not. So one con is it costs money. It's another investment in a bit of software. So if you've already got Lightroom, you might think, I don't really need this. However, if you're shooting professionally, I think you need to weigh up and ask yourself, how much is my time actually worth? And no doubt, this software is definitely gonna save you time. So you just need to ask yourself, is my time worth the investment? Pro, the thumbnails are there lightning fast. They're pulled direct from the raw file. So you don't have to wait on any rendering time. And that's an absolute godsend when you just wanna see your photos quickly and get through that cull. Con, currently the AI is very much geared towards the human face. So portraits and weddings benefit. Whereas at the moment, other photography disciplines don't benefit as strongly from that AI. Pro, and this is the biggie, the AI can do the cull for you. One click and you're done. Con, currently the AI isn't perfect, but it's still very good. So I've had good success using it for my family photos where I'm not too concerned whether one photo is just slightly better than another and the AI's got it wrong. I've just done the one click AI auto cull and I've been really happy with the results. But when you're using this professionally, I probably recommend just going back through the photos just to double check that you're happy with the results particularly at the beginning when the AI is still learning your culling habits. Pro, the interface is modern, clean, neutral, simple, everything you want from a culling software. Con, but this could also be a pro. Currently, you can't actually delete your photos directly from Filter Pixel. And that's done as a bit of a safety feature. So you'll need to go into a folder on your operating system and still actually physically delete those photos if you want them permanently gone. Pro, and this is the biggest one of the lot, all of these things add up to a really speedy cull. And at the end of the day, that's what we're after, just getting through those photos as quickly as possible. Here's my conclusion, I really like it. Anything that saves me time on my workflow, mm, I want a piece of that. So I'm really happy with this software. People who shoot weddings and portraits are certainly gonna benefit the most from this culling software, but I've certainly saved myself a lot of time culling my personal photos with this, but also having the AI analyze sharpness, that's come in handy for my landscape photography and also my architectural work as well. Combining that with the speed at which those previews load up, I mean this is actually a really useful software for all photography genres. I'd recommend taking advantage of the free trial. I've got a link to that in the description below. And if you like the software and like me, you value your time well it's a bit of a no-brainer thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video